Ink World consists of three books, the first of which is Ink Heart. This is nearly 550 pages and it's such a good read. Second is Ink Spell. This has 650 pages and is probably my favourite of the three. And thirdly, Ink Death. Now this book is nearly 700 pages and it's rather quite long. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of the whole trilogy, starting with the first book, Ink Heart. The book begins with a young teenage girl, Maggie, and her father, Mo, traveling across Europe in search of a book, Ink Heart. There is reason to all of this. You see, Mo has a special gift. By reading aloud, she can read characters out of books. I know you, what you might be thinking, what the heck, Michael? But this is a fancy world, so just go with it. And you see... When Mo finally finds a copy of the book, he brings it to his aunt Alnor in Italy. But unfortunately, shortly after he comes there, he's invaded by Capricorn's man. You see, a while back, Mo was reading Inkheart aloud, and he read his wife inside a book, and Capricorn with his men outside. And this is Mo's motive. He's trying to read her back out. But anyways, Capricorn and his men bring him back to his castle, in the mountains, where they put him in imprisonment. In the castle, we meet all the other characters, such as the Magpie, Dustfinger, and Orpheus. Also, a Silvertongue, who has a speech impairment and can't read characters out fully. For the rest of the book, Mo and Maggie face lots of different adventures. Some of these involving treasure, dogs, rioters, Cinderella. It's great stuff. I absolutely love this book. It formed a lot of great relationships and also built some really strong characters such as Dustfinger and Capricorn. And its villains are absolutely amazing. It was a very enjoyable read and I would highly recommend this book. Moving on to Ink Spell. Ink Spell is my favorite book of the whole trilogy. Basically, Maggie is completely captivated by the world that her mother Risa describes and she falls in love with it. After a lot of action, she ends up going into the book with a boy named Freed. Here they find themselves in the world that they love, and it's absolutely beautiful. Dustfinger is with his family, and Maggie stays with Finoglio, the writer of Inkheart. The level of adventure in this book is elevated from the first book, and it's absolutely amazing. I love all the things that they find, the, the fairies, the castles, the ugly princess, as well as the adder. A villain way more powerful than Capricorn. The book goes into so much depth and the action is just immense. I did not expect it in the slightest from a teenager's book. The third book of the series and also the largest, Ink Death. Personally, I'm a bit indecisive about my opinion on this book because although it features all the characters that you fell in love with and there is so much more depth and you also meet really amazing characters such as giants, and it's a really great book, but having said that, it's super long. And I thought that kind of let it down quite a bit, because the chapters tend to drag on. And by the time you got to the end of it, you forgot to start. Which, um, this book also takes place mainly in the ink world. But here, the world is, um, no longer the happy place that Maggie first saw it as. The Piper, Babus, and... Adder, who's still alive, are all adding to the danger and constant suspense. And in the end, there's only one resolution. Maggie needs to write and she needs to read aloud to save herself and her family. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the series. It was a great read and a fabulous way of getting into the more adult books. So, if you're not all about that, so if you're not all about that Twilight Life, or the Lord of the Rings, maybe try picking up Inkheart and giving it a read. Thank you for watching. Till next time.